Hello, my name is Gary Howell. I'm the founder of Morgan Walsh Consultancy. We provide IoT services to local government and also commercial organisations. We're going to look at the multi-tech outdoor LoRaWAN gateway called the Conduit IP67, and specifically how to construct the hardware including the antenna systems. The main unit is of a very robust construction, and along the top edge we have antenna connections. On the base we have mounting points and on the bottom edge further connections. We have two, one or two antennas depending on how many radios you ordered and a dedicated GPS antenna. And there's two smaller antennas for the 4G connectivity. I'd also strongly recommend fitting a lighting arrestor. I only have one here uh, but you'd normally have one per antenna. Also a PoE power injector and an air antenna extension cable in case you wish to mount an antenna separate from the base unit. There's also a mounting kit and you'll also need a suitable length of exterior grade network cable, cat5 or better, with an unbooted end. And of course a cable for your laptop connection. Looking at the main unit in more detail, along the top edge we have antennas for the LoRaWAN radios. This is Radio 2 and this is Radio 1. And here in the middle we have the GPS antenna connection. And on the bottom edge we have two antenna connections for the 4G connectivity. And in the middle a uh, network connection for power over Ethernet and also for uh, Ethernet connectivity to the internet if required. And finally next to that a socket for your SIM card. To construct the antenna system we take our antenna, our lightning arrestor. Here I'm just swapping the nut and the star washer over. Uh, screw the antenna onto the arrestor. It needs to be uh, tight, but not over tight so that it breaks. And then wind up the nut on the arrestor and tighten with a spanner. Now we take this assembly and attach to one of the LoRaWAN ports. Screw up the knurled nut with our fingers as tight as we can. Note the earth mounting point here on the arrestor. And then for a final tighten uh, we're going to use a pair of pliers. We should find we get another eighth of a turn or so uh, to ensure the connection is nice and tight. Now we take our second antenna. Normally you'd uh, also add a lightning arrestor to this too. And a final tighten. Now we take our GPS antenna and tighten in a similar way. Again, using the pliers to get a final uh, one eighth of a turn or so to ensure a good watertight connection. Along the bottom edge of the unit, we'll now attach our 4G antennas. And as before, tighten with a pair of pliers. Now we're going to add our SIM card. So remove the clear plastic cover and taking the card and in our case it's um, pins up towards us and with the cut off uh, part of the SIM going into the unit. And now press all the way in and then with your fingernail and then release slightly and it will lock in place. Now replace the plastic cover 
and uh, Titan. There are specified uh, torque settings for all of these connections, however I don't have a handy torque gauge to hand, so I'm using a spanner and my best judgement. Now we'll add our network cable, so unscrew the outer nut, and the grommet uh, is split so that the outer case can come off. And the internal rubber grommet is also split to allow us to insert the cable. So take your exterior grade network cable, add the outer nut, and place within the rubber grommet with the larger flange on the right hand side in this case. And then the outer harder case around that, again with the castellations on the left hand side in this case. Now insert the network cable into the unit, uh, and in our case the uh, locking pin is facing down. And finally tighten the outer nut. We're looking to ensure here that we have a good seal between the rubber grommet and the cable. It's also worth noting at this point of the earthing points. Uh, we see here bottom left of the unit and also there will be an earthing point on each of the lightning resters. And they should be connected up to your earthing points as per your local regulations. We're now going to seal all of these joints with self-amalgamating tape. Here, here, here. On the 4G connectors here and here. And of course the network connector here. If you've not used this tape before, it's essentially six to itself. I'll give you a short demonstration. So take around 30 centimeters of the tape and uh, pull it apart with your fingers. The tape sticks to itself when stretched, like here. So we start off the run, hold and stretch and keep stretching as we take the tape all the way around. And again, keep stretching here and it'll stick to itself and keep stretching and turning all the way down and all the way back up with the final stretch and attachment here back at the top. This should be continued all the way down the arrestor and to the base of the unit and then repeated in these points here. Now we have the mounting plate which goes on the back of the unit through these four mounting holes here. Prepare your screw with the star washer and the flat washer and apply and tighten up. If mounted to wall you can use this mounting kit in these four holes here. The kit's provided with a jubilee clip or two jubilee clips which are generally too large. Uh, I would suggest two inch ones. So with your pole going this direction you would put the jubilee clips over this way or if it's horizontal, then this way. The antennas, of course, must be pointing vertically. Finally, we need to attach our network cable to the POE power injector. And this goes in the out port. That's the mains cable. And finally, the cable for your laptop for configuration. The hardware is now ready for the next part of the configuration, which is through the web interface. And this will be covered in a separate video. We hope that you found this video useful. If there's anything we can do, please do get in touch. Thanks very much for watching.